just got off the phone with the, uh, it's confusing. So this is about the townhouse. Uh, I have a lawyer in Nanaimo doing all the closing documents, but then I have a notary here in Kelowna because I stay here past year pretty much all the time with my girlfriend. So I didn't want to have to go back to the island to sign something and then have nowhere to go, no, nothing to do. So I signed here, but they're all panicking because I guess if they don't get the documents in the next 30 minutes, if they cancel my appointment, we do it tomorrow. If that happens, then they can't fund the mortgage on Friday and I can't move in. And I was just like, I'm, I'm numb to it. I'm not even emotional about it anymore because it's been like, all right, whatever. If it was like a traditional uh, purchase, I'd be panicking because I had expectations, but there's been such a shit show. So anyways, today's Wednesday. I get possession on Friday. I don't have insurance yet. I need to deal with that. I don't have any hydro hooked up or water or internet i've done nothing so far because it's been such like uh we'll see however i did book a mover and apparently it's happening but one of my neighbors was there and she's like it's so bad like there's weeds all the landscaping's overrun with weeds like the doorways are blocked in with weeds right now and um uh other deficiencies weren't fixed which i was expecting and a few comments and people people are like why are you complain so much blah, blah 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 it's not about that this isn't about me this is about business. This is about when you sell a product, there's an expectation. This is so bad, it's insulting. They just don't care. Whenever you take money from somebody, you have an obligation to fulfill the minimum of what you said you would fulfill. And in most cases, you should overdo that with something better. So if I was gonna sell you a car, which I did recently, I sold that Cayenne I had, I went out and I washed it and put gas in it. So the person that was buying it had good experience. Now, I don't sell cars for a living. I'll never see them ever again. But it's the, I would say, the right thing to do. So when I complain about the townhouse, it's not about poor Dave. Um, I'm so used to this shit now. I'm like, whatever. It's more about like, this is what happens out there. And I want to kind of document this for you guys so that if you've never purchased anything before, you kind of know what to look out for and what went wrong here. So you're educated. That's something I would appreciate watching these videos. So it's not a poor Dave. Dave's very fortunate. Dave's girlfriend has a house with a crazy view. Dave pays nothing towards this. Dave is a sponge. So today we have to make some phone calls and get things set up and then we have to go to the office, the notary and sign everything. I doubt I can film that, but I'll try anyways and get thrown out. Uh, I still have the Bentley, so Mike gave me that Bentley for the week, which is awesome. I really like it actually. So the Flying Spur I never liked in the past because it looks really old and shitty, but the facelift one, 2014 to 2018, I think it was, has a W12, has 616 horsepower. It has more horsepower than a Lamborghini Huracan. Uh, super smooth, great interior. I actually really like that car. I wish it was a bit cheaper because the trajectory of that car is to go down, down, down. So right now that car is about 125. That car would be really cool if it was like between 70 and $80,000 because that's probably going to stay there and you wouldn't lose anything. So maybe I'll wait a few more years and grab one of those because I really like it. Um, this is a big reason why I have a G-Wagon again is I knew when I bought that and then when I bought it was such a crazy rare spec and such a low mileage that when I drive it for a few years, when I sell it, I'll, 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 it'll be free. I'll sell it, but I paid for it. My first year, I made money off of. The Bentley made money off of. The Rolls Royce I broke even on. So really, I haven't spent any money on cars since I got the G-Wagon in 2020? 2020? 2020, yeah, January 2020 from August. So three years now, I've been driving for free. Minus interest and insurance, which I like. So that's uh, my brain. It doesn't matter how much money the company makes or I make or whatever. I'm still like, I don't want to lose money on anything. So I always buy vehicles knowing that I'm not going to lose on it. This is a good way of looking at life. Like you should put money in things that appreciate, not depreciate, or things that make you really, really happy. I love Bentleys and I love cars, but not enough to lose money on them. A house is gonna go up in value. Watches ironically go up in value. Cars lately have been, just not Bentleys. Well, we got done in the end. We're driving to the lawyer's office right now. No, the notary's office right now. Where my Gumball Three Thousand jersey. So I want to be really intimidated with the football jersey. His big, wide, broad shoulders really fills it out nicely. No joke, the Bentley is legit fast. I mentioned earlier it has like 615 horsepower, more than a Huracan. And like, fucking hell. Like, hold on. <laughs> I love it. I want it. And I want Damon to pay for it. Right there? Yep. Awesome. We went, to, we went golfing and then we uh, just did a tour on the...
Guess what? <laughs> I'm no longer your homeless boyfriend. What? I've signed up Z papers. Who do you have to pay off? And I am now a home. Well, I don't really own it because it's finance, but anyways, I bought some champagne to celebrate. So we have a vacation home now. We have a vacation home in Anaima. Hold on. It's a little greasy. There you go. Are you bringing this to my soccer game? Yeah, I went and bought. I think I'm supposed to be bought by the um, selling agent, but I don't think the selling agent's going to buy me anything. Maybe we're restraining an order when we're done. Yeah, or the opportunity to lose their number. <laughs> so it's done. I've signed all the papers. Um, there's a few mistakes in the paperwork. Uh, because a bunch of credits I had for some other stuff, so look at that fix. But Friday, get the keys. Court has to go to Nantucket for her job. Um, what's that funny? Because <laughs> there once was a man who lived in Nantucket. Every time I say that, people are like, is this real? Well, keep going with that. I don't know the rest of the story. It's a cliffhanger. So, court, court, Courty Court is going to Nantucket. I'll be driving to the island to do paper or not paperwork, get the keys and then move and figure out that. I just called the hydro, called the gas company. And they're like, uh, they actually, it's been so long since I had an account in my name that they wanted to deposit because they don't think I'm worth like tr trustworthy. They're right. Well, because you've been homeless. I've been homeless and um, just looking for a warm place to sleep. In any event. Where am I going to get my volunteer hours now? Honey, we have a vacation home now in, in Nanaimo, British Columbia. That gets decorated. A redesign. You've been buying stuff. Where's the stuff you bought? It's all in the garage. Yeah, lot there. Next to the golf All the necessities. That'll be good. Over here. It's a birthday gift because it's Brooklyn's birthday. She's very thoughtful. We have a kitchen, table, window, curtain rod. We have a master bedroom window thing. Anyways. Um, her job is not interior design, but it's a hobby that maybe one day will turn into a job, but she loves decorating. She has a really good job. And I'm not like, I just, I do not care. I don't want it to look shitty, but I just, I can never take the time to go. What would look good on this window? So she's been buying stuff for my place with my credit card. So a little bit of G-Wagon with this stuff. Uh, the G-Wagon is actually still in August getting something fixed. Um, the sensors for the, uh, traction control went off saying there's no traction control which I need very, very much, especially in the G-Wagon, if you guys know my history. But they gave me the Bentley. The Bentley I'm actually in love with. Like, I don't want to give it back. I had no idea that Flying Spur that year was that sick. I thought they were really aged and like really archaic, but they're not, they're sick. All right, honey, I told them everything. You told them everything? Yeah, even the fact you're playing copyright music right now and have to talk louder, or else that's gonna demonetize the video, so I'm gonna keep on talking. Well, you're going to Sonos and pause the music. There's a puppy puppy. I keep talking, okay, we're good. <laughs> Did you just turn that on? Was it playing the whole time? That's not day drinking. I know. So we have champagne to celebrate. You have a soccer game. I do. Are you drinking at a soccer game? That would be illegal. Wait, I did that wrong. I faced it you. No, that would be illegal. <laughs> Guard dogs, attack. <laughs> Save the day. That's where the shadow goes over there. But it's people aggressive. at the beach don't do it like this. They do it right in front of them. Yeah. Oh, that's how the sun works with science. Oh. Oh man. Why did we bring this then? I don't know. You packed it. Just go sit over here. <laughs> you don't need to watch my game. It's just high. We like just tilt the umbrella so we can't see anything happening on the field. My girlfriend plays professional soccer. That's how he makes all her money. <laughs> Cora, I need you to score a goal for the audience tonight. Yeah, I will cheer. For the DD family, you need to score one goal. Huh? Go and I'll film it. Is that, can we buy a blizzard? A blizzard pizza? Is it going to come out of your paycheck? Salary. I don't think he can eat a blizzard. <laughs> I'm lactose intolerant. I can't have blizzards anymore. If I actually can't have any more joy, anything that's going to be joy makes me. Must have been hurt. Do you know the people that tell everybody that they're allergic to dairy? Yeah. That's him. That's him. Because it's new. How do you know someone's lactose intolerant? They Don't tell worry, you. they'll tell you. <laughs> Hi, this one's a vegan. Don't worry, they'll tell you. <laughs> That's so true. That's what I said. We had lunch together. Night. What did you say to the server? I'm vegan. <laughs> She's like, congratulations. She's like, no, I want you to acknowledge that right now. I want you to celebrate me amongst your friends and peers. Acknowledge that I'm a good human. One Facebook post. <laughs> Thank you.
I don't understand any of this. All I know is that we're halfway through and Courtney has not scored a single goal. These guys want her to win. But she's run super fast. She runs incredibly fast. I'm tired from That's watching her. Yep. I would run 20 feet and be destroyed. <laughs> Okay, so what was the score at the end? <laughs> you're not pumping my gas for me? No, we, we don't do that anymore. It was 1 0, right? But there were some unfair calls. It was 2 1. 2 1 for them? Yeah, because I took a girl down the box tonight. Yeah, like really hard, like to take the cleats up. That green brings up the color of your eyes, actually. Is that the color of my eyes? The green. And there's her too. They're the same eyes because they're the same eyes. That was a close one. <laughs> that was a close one. Dear Diary, today was a good day. <laughs> what happens if you hit the side? Try it. I mean, doesn't that curve my wheels a bit? Don't, don't follow his instructions, just keep going, just keep going. You know going. what, I'll don't try stop. it. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. <laughs> I do what I want. He's curved a wheel. Oh, crap. I'm gonna practice curving wheels in your car. <laughs> I guarantee you, you've curved a few wheels in your life. Just None? golf cart. Okay, Thanks that's rude. Go. I was really upset about the one time I curved a wheel. Was it recently? It was my winter tires. I was pulling a U-turn, which you can't do in BC, by the way. Dear diary, today I I, only, I got my only ticket pulling a U-turn. Really? Mm-hmm. Yep. And the postman, postman, I sound so old in English, um, Canada Post did it in front of me. So I was like, well, he's doing it. I'll do it. And then I pulled the, I grew up in the States card and he's like, well, how long have you lived in Canada? And I was like, 10 years didn't really work. Wow. I should go to your um, your TED talk about that. Ticket dismissers. Oh, turbocharger. Holy moly. Time for it. <laughs> Court drives a 2018 Audi SQ5. License plate number, we'll leave that blank. <laughs> and um, she goes a lot of fuel because she's heavy on the throttle. All right, left the bank. I've paid all my down payment and I have to return the Bentley, unfortunately. And we're back here at the August garage. Look at the G-Wagon. God, she's sexy. Check that out, where is it? I thought my car was on these windows. Did I miss it? Here, hold on. I'm pretty sure the old DDE R8. Yeah, there she is, right there. Oh my goodness. Six o'clock in the morning right now. I've already been on the road for an hour. There was an issue with, of course, the townhouse last night. And it's actually on my end this time. It's nothing to do with them. Without getting too boring for you guys, I had a few uh, addendums to change the price, which what I thought was cash back, meaning the unit's supposed to have air conditioning, it doesn't. So I had $5,000 for that and then other stuff. So basically, Along the way, I was like, well, hey, you know, the contract said yeah, I would get a, a fridge and a barbecue and you guys didn't do that. So they actually, they legally have to provide those things or then get the money back. So I thought I was getting the cash back, which I was gonna put towards renovations. Then last night, four o'clock, my mortgage broker called me saying that the bank's not gonna fund the mortgage because you can't do that. It has to come off the purchase price. So you can't get the money back because um, that's like basically less of a down payment down. So the bank has more risk than you. Anyways, long story short, I was like, well, whatever, this is all the lawyers. Like, I, I, don't, I don't know, like, who missed this? So it was basically a combination of things. So last night, my dinner with my girlfriend and her friend, I was like signing docu signs and having to send more money. It was just a big stressful thing, but now I have to get there because in Canada, it's really stupid. If you're a Canadian, you, you'll get this. In the US, I can send right now Fifty thousand dollars for my online banking to you if I have your banking information. In Canada, you can't do that. In Canada, any wire has to be done in person. The most you can send electronically is called an email transfer. We don't have Venmo, and the most you can send in one day is twenty five hundred dollars. Well, I have to send six thousand dollars to my lawyer to finish the deal, but I literally have to walk into a bank, get a piece of paper, walk to their bank, deposit that in their account, like. 
Canada's are like cool in some ways, in some ways I'm like. So anyways, um, trying to catch the 10 a.m. ferry, so I left at five. We're in the G-Wagon, so I have some stuff to do today as far as business. I'm gonna film a rock form promo, and then make some Facebook videos with the G. Um, yeah, so I'm tired, but it's a beautiful day. I'll show you some shots here or uh, where I'm driving. This is the 97, they call it the connector, because this is the highway that connects you to the uh, Coquihalla Highway Through Hell, and it's beautiful. The winter, it's pretty brutal. This is one of the worst roads I've driven. It's always covered in ice, but this time of year, it's actually quite relaxing. And I actually enjoy waking up super early and doing a drive like this, because there's no one out there. You can kind of just put along, not constantly changing lanes to keep people out of the way. Just keep it chill. It's a beautiful sunrise. That windshield, my God. The two wagon windshield's like straight up and down, so it gets every single bug and it burns a ton of fuel. I've been driving now for an hour and I've already gone through a quarter tank. And my range is like, where is it? 387 kilometers, it's like 250 miles. So at this point, I wouldn't even make it to my destination. So I have to maintain. The funny thing about the G-Wagon is that you really can't speed in it because if you speed, well, let's say I was doing 30 or 40 over right now, which I'm not, I'm actually doing the speed limit, I would burn more fuel than the time I save me and half stop for fuel. So it actually would not help me right now to speed. I've tested this many, many times. By the way, shout out to you, Eric and Carmatastic for the steering wheel. Now, it looks like it's crooked, but these old G-Wagons never really drive straight. There's a lot of freeness. Freeness, is that a word? So you're always kind of making micro adjustments to keep them driving straight. That's just the characteristics of them. I think it needs a bit of alignment, but in any event, all the buttons work except for cruise control, because cruise control on this one is here on the stock. So everything else is functional. It's all touch screen, it's pretty cool. And I love all the Alcantara. It actually matches the um, ceiling of the G-Wagon to Alcantara. So a little update for it. And that's pretty much it for the G-Wagon. Obviously, these things are are wild and a bit crazy. And that's all I want to do with it. I don't want to lift it in the last one. The last one was a miserable thing to drive. I had the 35-inch MTs on it and a 4-inch lift. And it was like, I couldn't do this drive right now. This would be like, I'd be tipping over. I can't make this shit up. Not the ferry, but the ferry is like three miles that way. It's this backed up all down the highway because there's two terminals. The other terminal, someone got drunk on the ferry, caused a huge incident, that just turned the ferry around and arrest him, and it canceled all the sailing. So every single person on that side of Vancouver is now here. Now I have a reservation and assured loading, but that's gonna expire here in 13 minutes if I don't get to the front. So we might be fucked. So this is the only way to get a vehicle to the island. It's a government-run ferry service. which is considered an actual highway. The CEO was just fired because they don't have enough staff and it's causing major disruptions and all that. What should be happening right now is flaggers up here to go, who has a reservation, who doesn't? If you don't have a reservation, every single ferry is booked today. So if there's no reservation, you want to go to standby, you're, you're basically fucked. You're not going to the island today. But people that have reservations are all the way back here and there's no way to understand who does and who doesn't. So people that have reservations are going to miss their ferry now because there's a lack of planning. Now again, if ferries were canceled, and that's an un, you know an unplanned event. But there's things you can do and have basically a relief crew from that ferry rip over here. That's a few hours ago. Rip over here to manage the traffic. Do I get upset? No, because life's very short. And there's no point about it. However, there are people that will be very upset right now, especially people that don't have reservations. Like you're literally not going to the island. Your next option is to fly. If you can get a flight and the flight's obviously more expensive, that's the one really, 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 really annoying part about living on the island is, is shit like this. Like I have to be there at one o'clock to meet the movers. If I don't make this ferry, I'm fucked. Okay, it's backed up all down the highway, like all down the highway because everyone's trying to get to this ferry. And there's no flaggers here to divide between reservations and non-reservations. I've got 10 minutes or else I'll miss this fucking boat. By the way, it's pretty out there. And the ladies are doing a-okay. They just slept the entire time. And actually, they're ripping. I'm gonna catch the 10 o'clock, hopefully. 
it's 9.20, I'm already at the ferry, so I did that drive in f less than four hours, but then it was fucking misery. So people, this is the uh, lane that goes to the actual village and for drop off passengers, this is the lane for the actual ferry. Some people are thinking they're clever and taking this lane, but then right there you have to come back in and everyone sees what you just did, no one's letting them in. Then we all have to stand in a parking lot together. So there's times where it just pays to, to not be a dick. As he'll soon discover. Oh, well, that's good. They, uh, they really made sure they're on top of this. Hey, look at this asshole right here. Oh, you dirty. I'm gonna go find him and ridicule him on the internet. Look at this. Oh my God. This is the ticket booth. This is not even for, holy shit. I've never seen the ferry like this before. So this doesn't even pass the gate yet. This is literally just to buy a ticket. I made the ferry and I was planning on having a nap, but the guy next to me set his alarm. So in a few seconds, it's gonna go off again. Yeah. So you know a ferry, the ferry moves and it vibrates and it jolts and it gyrates. So you can't lock your car because your car has certain sensors in it for theft. And they tell you that when you go on the ferry. So this is the next two hours. As you can see, the misery continues on this side, but we're off the ferry. Now we have to go back to the bank because <clears throat> somebody screwed up. Just left the bank again. The same process as yesterday. I had to get money to my attorney and trust to complete the deal. It's basically a remainder of your down payment, but they miscalculated something. So I had an extra $5,000 surprise top of the other $4,000 surprise yesterday. And I signed everything and that's all done. So now the movers are almost ready. They did my neighbor's unit. I actually found out through, through her there's a mover available today because it was last minute. So they're finishing up her move. But the problem we have now, you guys, we're not done yet, is the deal hasn't completed yet, which means the bank, pardon me, the lawyer gets the money from the bank and gives it to the seller. That's called completion and title registration. And that's happened to technically get the keys. Now, most realtors or sellers, they'll let you move your stuff in while it's waiting to happen the day of, because like you already have a contract, you've already committed all the money, like it's just paperwork. However, this realtor says I have to wait. I have to wait until it all goes through, um, until I can start moving my stuff. The, the stressful part of that is, once the movers grab all my stuff from storage and show up at the property, I don't know how patient they're going to be, how much they're going to charge me or how long they'll wait. They might say, dump it in front of the house, in the garage, I don't know. So I'm trying to elevate this right now, law of attraction. That's going to feel great that when I get the call from the mover, I'll also get the call from the lawyer. And I'll tell you guys, we'll do a tour. We'll do the final product. I haven't seen it since the last time I did the video with Court uh, when it was all those deficiencies. I suspect it's the same. I suspect it's all the same issues. And... Um, Honestly, I'm just tired of complaining about it. Uh, I'm just gonna get it fixed and it depends on how bad it is. Like if there's actual deficiencies like that are a big deal, like structural or anything that's like, could be in the thousands to repair or down the road, then I'd probably litigate on that. But if it's just like, if it was like five grand worth of stuff, it's just like, you gotta understand like, energy is expensive. Your energy is expensive and you only have so much of it. So if I took my energy to fight for $5,000 and it took away energy from the business or my kids or my girlfriend or something else that has a more of a longer runway and more important, then that would be a problem. So I have to outweigh the energy and the mind share takes. Is it worth it? Um, a lot of people will say things like, oh, you're rich and blah, 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 blah. But we're not. And you have to remember, the cars belong to the company. Damon and I take a paycheck. Damon and I are not equal share partners. He started the company long before me. I came in when I was already making money. I didn't put anything into it. So we're not equal share partners, and nor should we ever be. Um, but when you take money out of a company, you pay tax on it. And where I live, the tax rate's like 50%. So if you say, well, it's only X amount of dollars for you know the 5,000, the 10,000, whatever the dollar amount is, it's like, it's actually double. And it's not unlimited because our company has expenses. We have the cars, we have the shop now. Like it takes a lot to run DDE and we're healthy. But it doesn't mean I can pull out an extra hundred grand because I want to buy a piece of gold. 
you know, there's a shareholder value in my perspective, shareholder and Damon's, we have to track all that, and I have expenses, I have ex-wives, I've got child support, I have spousal support, so, you know, I'm not by any means broke or struggling, but, you know, it's not the perception you might see in the main channel of my lifestyle. When I'm home, I don't go to a restaurant every night, um, I watch what I spend, I have a savings account, I finally, for the first time at 40, have, I'm 39, 40 in April, finally have an RRSP, which is like a 401k for you Americans watching. So I'm trying to make some moves to set myself in my future because I've burned a lot of years, made a lot of mistakes financially, and now it's kind of trying to get smart about it. So, yeah, when I complain about the townhouse, it's more about the investment concerns I have. The other part of it is, like, my daughter, Kenley, so it's Brooklyn's birthday this weekend. She's with her mom today and tomorrow. I have her Sunday. I was supposed to pick up Kenley today from her mom's house, but I don't know if I'm going to have a place to stay tonight yet, and her room won't be set up, so I have to figure out how do I get her room ready so she can come there tonight, or call me back and be like, hey, I need another night, which she's totally cool. We're actually really good friends. We get along great. We do great, great co-parenting. In fact, right now, uh, my ex-wife is watching my girlfriend's dogs for a week because she's traveling for work. So it's pretty cool, man. Like when you can find, you know, that relationship in all relationships, even when they're an ex and make it positive because what's the point? Life is very short and it ends all suddenly for all of us and horribly so. Let's uh, make the best over here. So enough talking. Let me figure out if I have the keys yet, where the movers are. In the meantime, I'm going to wash the Jewbank because it's filthy. So here we are at the mini storage. The moving truck will be here <clears throat> in five minutes. The lawyer called and said that the bank's money landed. So when you borrow money to buy a house, the bank funds it through a lawyer or a notary. Usually it's a lawyer. If you use a lawyer. And then they disperse it to the seller and the seller's agents. So realtors split a commission, listing agent, selling agent. On a new construction, it's a lower commission. So for my realtor, Kate, who's been amazing to all this, it's not her fault, any of this. It's a shitty paycheck and 14 months of hell. So when you're a realtor, it's not always easy. In the past two years, it may have felt like it. Um, they'll get here and then I haven't had confirmation yet that the money's moved to the seller and they will not let me access the unit until the money lands in their account, which that's their prerogative. Or as Damon say, that's their pr provocative. Um, I'm tired, you guys. Like, you can probably see it, my energy. This has been a long journey, and the past 48 hours have been super stressful with all the financing issues and the like, last minute of money. And so, before we get on this done, but it's almost like, like I'm not excited. Like, I hate this place which isn't good. So I have to change my mindset about now the fact that my daughters have bedrooms and a really cool property that when I'm not here, my friends and family can stay at. That would be a good investment. And then if they go to college one day, that's where to live. So it's a plus. Uh, the market is still up. I am still up in equity. So it's been a good deal that way. So just need to kind of change where our brains were because It'd be really not to be mad all the time and be bitter, but there's no time for that. Like once it's done, it's done. Once I have the text, you're in, it's done, we move on. Also make jokes about it, but like in my heart, it won't bug me anymore. By the way, Jew wagon looking super, super sick. I love that thing. They're, if you've never done one before, they don't drive what you expect for the money they cost, but they've goddamn really cool. Hold on. Do you hear the big pipes right now? Somebody at the beach over there is playing bagpipes. And all I can think of, if you're a corn fan, you'll know this. That is peachy. I officially have the keys. There we go. This is for the garage. Holy shit. There's four of them. Yeah. And then it's for the main door. Thank you. No problem. And then the garage code. All right, this is it, you guys. First entrance. It's done, deal's done. It's not even real to me right now. It's been such a long time coming. So um, it's not great. It's really dirty. Um, there's lots of little issues, but at the end of the day, we can take care of that. The one thing that's really weird is why? There's no closet organizers. <laughs> like, what would it cost to put some wire racks up? $100 a closet? Nothing. 
And just like the repair work is... It, it would be what you'd expect if this was like a used townhouse. It just looks like it's used. Sorry. Yeah, it looks used. Like it's new, but it just looks like it's five years old. So a lot of the stuff will have to just be patched up later and just dealt with. Oh my god. Um, oh, there's a spider. There's a laundry room. This little contraption is kind of fun. I'm just being picky now, but my kids have bedrooms. I'll show you my, the rooms. There's a bathroom. Big bathroom. It's filthy, but what would you expect for a million dollar luxury townhouse? Tub, also dirty. That looks like it's broken already. Yeah, I need to get someone to come in here and clean. Cause it's Really, really dirty. I'm losing weight. All right, bedroom number one. I got a wide screen for you guys can see more. Huge closet, of course. No closet organizer whatsoever. But for a little girl, lots of room for activities. Another room. And we head upstairs. <sighs> Fucking hell. <laughs> oh. It just pisses me off because they just don't give a fuck about craftsmanship whatsoever. But. There it is. Look at the view. It's never the same on camera, but it is freaking breathtaking. That makes me really happy. That makes it all worth it. Fireplace, you all, I've already shown you guys all this. I'm not gonna get into the details, but I'm out of breath. I'm just exhausted. And I'm just happy to have somewhere to, well, I was gonna put your toilet paper, but somewhere to use the bathroom maybe. What the hell's going on there? You see they marked it. There was damage in the island actually. See how they fixed it. And there was chips on the other side of the wood. <laughs> oh, that's that get fixed. No. And there was this, um, this wasn't attached. Is there, Shelving in the pantry, they said there would be. Nope. What else we got? Rooftop patio. So this is uh, a, a sitting area. So this was quoted as somewhere to put a chair, you can read the window. I don't think you'd fit a chair there. But what's cool is this huge patio. And it was massive. I should have slammed closed. It probably will actually. Whew. Just keeps good pressure washing. Who the fuck is this? New neighbors? Who the fuck is that? Oh, that's my realtor. I'll go this way. They're not really um, gas pages right now. I haven't recorded the past few hours. I'm dealing with like all the contractors. The guy that does the internet came here, and I guess when they built it, they didn't run the proper coaxial cable to the building, and now it's too late. So to install internet here, they need coaxial cable to do that. They have to send in a, a team of guys to drill holes and run wires now because the builder who's supposed to do that didn't do it. And I said to them, I was like, I'm shocked. They got everything else right. Like I can't believe they missed something. It's crazy. Crazy weed action. Oh, the boys are here from Clydesdale. You're gonna hook me up. <laughs> Got all my stuff in the back, all my worldly possessions. Mostly just junk. Not a nice part. Is there anything good in there? 
there was a bunch of boxes that were open and <laughs> looked like somebody was camping out there for a bit. Well, uh, maybe we had a visitor, so. <laughs> Unfortunately for these guys, there's uh, three flights of stairs in there, so that's why I brought the big muscles here. Yeah, that's okay. You're big boys. Call um, Clydesdale. Clyde, yeah, call, I'll give you a free shout out. They're going to give me a really good price today, so. Or at least not rip me off. That's probably the better option. <laughs> <laughs> Five grand. Okay, I'll get set out of your way and I'll direct. And do I have a lot of stuff, do you say, or not a lot of stuff? It's not really, no. No, okay. Um, I don't think it's a lot. I mean, there's probably. You're probably right. You're probably gonna want to go through a bunch of stuff. It's all shit. You're telling me it's all shit. This is a. I had a green screen, so that's all uh, video prop equipment. Yeah. That's gonna go in the garbage. That's it my daughter's still bike. Good. It is good, but I don't have room for it at this place. Like, it's not big enough to have a room for a studio. Unless I had an OnlyFans model in here, which I don't. So. That's the. Let's goal. see. Will he make it? You got this. We'll do a flyby. Ready? <laughs> He's like, "What's this guy doing?" <laughs> So you guys watch the YouTube videos? Yeah. You checked them out? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh yeah. You like them? It's amazing. <laughs> Thanks, oh, yeah. man. Thank you, man. Yeah, I love that kind of stuff, man. Yeah, we're just professional troublemakers. Yeah, and that's, that's <laughs> it, right? Oh, I wasn't as lucky in my troublemaking days. <laughs> just throw me a watch it and I just did that to myself. <laughs> oh, that bag. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, I can't just stand here and watch people work, even though I'll probably make things worse. Yeah, I'll just leave them. I'm gonna fuck that up. Moves went really good. These guys are amazing. This is the dining area. Right? I just noticed there's no light in here. And they cheaped out last night. It was supposed to be a chandelier. But instead of putting a light in here, they put a blank plug on the roof. There's no light over in the dining area. <laughs> you gotta laugh at that one. Otherwise, you just have to cry. But uh, I'm getting stuff moved in. It's going pretty quick. I'm beat. It's 5.30. I've been up since 4.30. But we're getting a living room. I'm really appreciating sitting here in the center of the ocean. It makes all that stress really worth it. I love water. I love food. I love music. Check it out. All right. Hold on. Let's the camera. So that's your view that will get mounted there. And then that's your view. Pretty terrific. Who's on the island over there? What's this? All right, new homeowner, you know what time it is. Oh, that's right, baby, Home Depot. I need to get tools. When I got divorced the second time, I was just like, fuck all this, I don't want any of this shit anymore. I had a whole garage full of tools and cabinets, I got rid of all of it and gave it all away. And now if I want to hang a TV, I got nothing, so I have to get a socket set, a basic screwdriver set, a uh, level, probably a stud finder. Boop, 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 I'm right here. And I can't think of anything else I need right now. I have to hang curtains. I tried to find a handyman, but I just waited too late and it's just like, my kids come tomorrow, so I'm just gonna crank it all night and get everything done tonight. So I come tomorrow, they have bedrooms and beds. So, with that, let's go to Home Depot. I've actually been a homeowner for a long time. It's only recently I wasn't. I bought my first place when I was 21, and then I sold that, made some money off about a house when I was 22, 23. Had that, got divorced, bought another house, Built a house actually, uh, got divorced, lost that, and then I rented for the past few years, and now I'm back in the game. Fucking Home Depot bitches. I should probably get to drill the TV for the pilot holes so I don't crack the studs. Not nah, fucked up. We'll just go straight into the studs with the bolts. Um, socket set, level, uh, screwdrivers. Oh, this is a really dumb place to come because it's gonna be expensive here. Why the fuck is that so light? There's like nothing in it. Do you want to give me a hand just by yep. hanging out here? Yep. Sometimes this twine will kind of fall off of this reel a little bit. Yeah. So if you just want to keep it so it can keep spinning, and sure. I'll sit on the other end and keep, uh, keep going at it. Look at that nail pop. <laughs> That's not even that old yet. What's it, oh, you're gonna look like. And I nailed this too here, right? Just all that. Oh, lovely. <laughs> I'm excited to see what's behind here. Maybe there's a prize.
Well, when they built the unit, they didn't run the cable from the main junction box to each unit. So cable being for internet. It's the same for if you use fiber optic or whatever, it uses some sort of a line, whether it's a cat five or a coaxial, it doesn't matter. And normally the practice is you run a conduit with a string in it so that these guys can run it through. If the string's not there, no big deal, there's a conduit. But the conduit they used was a flex conduit that was kinked in every single unit. So they have to cut up all the drywall. Now, I'm at the end, where's my finger? Right there. And the junction box is right here. So think about the person that's at the very end unit. Oh. So this is day three of Shaw, the local cable provider trying to figure out how to get it done. And they had the whole crew here. They have like the big guns today. This is item one of a hundred of complete shit show. Now again, the place is awesome. I love it. It's all the finishing details. It's when you don't care. It's like the end of a marriage where you stop loving that person, but you're still there. So you're there, but you're not really there. That's the quality of this build. So this is just, um, you know, step one of, of many. Five days later, uh, I moved in. I've got basically 95% of all the boxes unpacked and things taken away. I even hung this blind. It's like a black out here, then it's like a sheer there. DIY, hung a curtain there, table's all set up. All the junk's gone. That's a lot of work. The biggest issue is I had stuff from like pre-divorce era. Like I had boxes and boxes of just shit I had to go through. I had to donate probably, oh man. Five of those massive con like uh, concrete, um, contractor grade garbage bags of stuff to the uh, Salvation Army or whatever place it's called. It takes old clothes. That's all done. But yeah, we are um, we're set up. And then my girlfriend comes back next time. We'll film that to do all the interior design. She has ideas and things like that for colors and stuff. My brain does not work that way. So now my cab will be here in a minute. There's no Uber where I live. It drives me nuts. And it's back to work tonight. Damon and I fly to LA. We've got, um, you're watching this, when are you watching this? You're watching this the day of. So we've got tomorrow we're filming the Mercy Reveal. The seven point should be done. So big things happen to DDE. <sighs> Bedroom, TV, which is broken. I got, I got hung all that effort. I got, I got broke during the move. <laughs> I'm telling exhausted right now. A bathroom. Yeah, that's basically it. It feels like someone lives here now. It was very depressing at first. I was very frustrated, but I had to change my mindset around complaining about the problems to appreciating the fact that I have a home for my daughters, to appreciating the fact that I can afford something that has a great view. The rest will get fixed. It'll be a challenge. The neighbors are all phenomenal. Everyone's in the exact same boat. Everyone feels the same way, and they're all very, very vocal about it. So I don't have to be the one person constantly yelling at the developer. And that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. It was over the span of a week. You watched me in a very real state and a lot of emotion and frustration. But at the end of the day, I'm very thankful. Thanks to you guys for watching everything we do so I can have somewhere to live. So thank you for not making me homeless. I'll see you in the next one.